So yesterday we made our first Scratch program. Today what we're going to do is adapt that slightly, and then we're going to learn about repetition, how we can make things happen repeatedly in Scratch. So to get back to where we were yesterday, click on this My Stuff button. Then I'm going to open up the video tutorial that we did yesterday, this project here. And I can just hit See Inside to get to the location we were yesterday. Now what I'd like to do uh, is just remind you of where we were at. So we had the cat coming in. He would then broadcast a message with the, which the other character would respond to. And at the end, they would both just disappear when they received goodbye. What we'd like to do today is make them slowly shrink prior to disappearing. Uh, so in order to do that, if you look at the Looks tab, you can see that there is a Change Size block. And so if I just double click on show right now so that we can see the character, if I change the size by 10, if I double click on that, you can see that it's slowly going to get larger. Uh, and if I were to make that negative 10, it would slowly get smaller as I double click on it. Now, those might be a little too large of steps. So let's say we went with negative 2 instead. And I started clicking on that a few times. And there we are. So now it's getting smaller. Now, of course, I don't want to have to double click on this a bunch. What I'd really like to have happen is for that to just repeat a bunch of times. So to do that, we go to the control menu and there's this handy repeat block right there. Now, I don't want to repeatedly hide, so I'm just going to grab that and put it at the bottom. But I want to repeat change size by negative two. And I'm going to say do that 50 times. Uh, so that's going to happen when I say goodbye. So let's go ahead and click the flag and see what happens. So our cat comes in, does his thing. <clears throat> and at the end, the cat will slowly shrink and then hide. Now there is a problem with this, and that is that if I run it again, you will see that the poor cat comes in as a very tiny little thing because we shrunk it, but we never bothered to set it back to its original size. So I'll stop it and go back to looks here, and we want to use the set size block. So right before we show the cat at the beginning, I'm just going to set the size to be back to 100%, in which case now if we run it, the cat will come in at full size. Let's do the same thing here with Giga. And this is a convenient time for us to show one other feature. So this backpack right here, what we can do is we can store code that we want to use in there. So let's say that I like this repeat 50 change size by negative two, and I know I want to use it somewhere else. I could just drag and drop it on Giga, but another option is to put it in the backpack, and then that backpack will stay. So when I go over to Giga, I can just drag this back out to here, and get rid of that hide, and hook it up, and everything should work. Now, of course, Giga, we want to make Giga back to full size as well at the start. So let's just set the size right here before Giga shows. And if we give that a run, we can make sure that things are working. So they both come in. And then with the goodbye, they should both shrink and disappear. Great. And when I run it again, wonderful they are now back to full size. So it's working great. And I'm going to save this thing as a copy so that our previous one doesn't change. Uh, and I'll call this first demo and just added repetition. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new project. So I went to file and hit new. And now what we want to do is see if we can figure out how to control a character using the classic WASD. And so I'll just call this WASD control version one. And the most common thing that I see when students attempt this is they go to events and they just grab this handy when a particular key is pressed. So if I wanted to make this happen, I could say, well, you know what, when the W key is pressed, Let's just go to motion. Now W, of course, I want to make that increase the Y value. So I'm going to use the change Y by a specific amount, and then we can test it. I just clicked in the stage and then hit W a few times. Then I'm going to right click on this when W key is pressed, 
hit duplicate. And let's just change that to be the S key. And unsurprisingly, we just want it to go the other direction, so that'd be negative 10. So now we can make the cat go up and down. And let's just duplicate that again by right clicking. This time, when the D key is pressed, I want to change X instead of Y. So let's just get rid of the Y there. Double check that that's working. Great. I'll duplicate that one last time. And we'll do the A key being an X value of negative 10. Great. And I'm going to right click and just hit clean up there so that looks a little nicer. All right. So we've got this working where now we can control my cat using WASD. There is a problem. One thing is that I can't move diagonally. So if I hit W and D together right now, oh, what do you know? I hit them exactly at the right time and it did work, but I, it, it moves at a really jittery pace. So you can see that when I hit a key, it'll move once and then stop and then keep moving. And the reason for that is that your operating system has a built-in delay. And that's so that, for example, let's say that I wanted to type something right up here. Let's say that I hit an A, watch what happens. I hit A and then it pauses for a second before it keeps on firing off a whole bunch of other A's. That's so that when you're typing and you're just typing a regular thing, it doesn't trigger that key a whole bunch of times. But it does cause us a little bit of problems here when we're trying to make our WASD uh, feature work without being kind of jittery motion. So this version one does work, but it's kind of jittery motion. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna save as a copy again here, and I'll just call this version two. Now, in order to avoid the jittery motion, what we really need to do is we need to have this changing Y and changing X stuff happen not just when a particular key is pressed, because that hesitation that's built into your operating system, we can't change that. So if we do it when these keys are pressed and only like that, that means that when we hold it down, we can't get rid of that uh, jittery motion. So we need some other way to do it. What we really need to do is we need to ask the computer over and over and over, is this key pressed without a pause? And the way we can do that is to simply hook it into a when the flag is clicked scenario. And under control, we can tell it to do something forever. So right here, this forever block is going to, whatever's inside here is just going to repeat over and over and over and over. So what exactly do I want to have repeat over and over? Well, it turns out that we can ask the computer questions. And the way we can ask a question is using something called an if block. So I'm going to drag in this if block inside forever. And I want to constantly ask the computer over and over and over if, for example, the W key is pressed, then I would want to change, and I'll just drag this across, I would want to change Y by 10 if the W key is pressed. Now, you'll notice that this little uh, blank there is a very specific shape. And the way that I access that shape is I find something in here that would fit inside of it. So for example, in sensing, there is a key and then I can pick which key. So let's go if key W is pressed, then change Y by 10. And if I click the flag, ah, so he did start moving right away. Great. So I'll just stop that for a second. We'll finish it off and keep going. So now we need to do the S. So I'm just going to right click on the if statement, duplicate it, choose S. And this time I just want to change Y by negative 10. I'll get rid of that and I can delete these now. Now when the D key is pressed, so once again, just duplicate this by right clicking, select the D. And now I want to change X by 10 duplicate it once more, change the A key, and now we're just changing X by negative 10. Okay, so we've got this working. Let's give it a run and see if it works. So I click the flag. Ah, okay, so now we have no hesitation. And again, the reason for that is that now I'm constantly asking this over and over and over without waiting for a key to be pressed. It's constantly asking that question whether I'm pressing a key or not. It only responds, however, if that particular key has happened, then it will run whatever's inside that if statement.